Hey everybody, it's HBCU Game Day. I'm Tali Carr in Atlanta. Join now. It's, it's rare that I get to talk to people who tower over me, but it's Tall Man <laughs> Radio here. Charles Edmond, the voice of the Braves at Alcorn State University. Charles, on the road, thank you for joining me from the hotel room, man. You got a baseball game you're calling later today. You are always on the move. Uh, thanks a lot, man, for hanging out with us today here at HBCU Game Day. Man, I cannot believe that I am actually here and talking to you right here and right now. I'm I'm kind of in the background. The, the hottest news uh, that's going on right now, I'm sure you're all over. What's going on? Nick Saban, Coach Deion Sanders, Travis Hunter, and, and anything else that's going on. I, I thought I would be postponed for another day. Charles, uh, <laughs> it's been a busy morning. As we talk now, it's, it's early afternoon on Thursday. Uh, we'll get this edited up. People will see it later, but... Safe to say it has been quite a busy day. Uh, let's just start there a little bit. We're, we're going to talk a whole lot of Alcorn State, but just in general, man. Um, what do you think about the movement that has been happening, uh, particularly in the SWAC, man? Just look, a lot of big names have been coming in. It's been an arms race across the football scene. Other people across the country are looking like, hey, hey, what's going on? How, how'd you get him? What, 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 what's happening there? What's happening there? Uh, what has this football recruiting been like, man, the last 18 months from your vantage point? Well, you know, I've, I'm a product of, of a SWAC school. I'm a Grambling grad. And two weeks after I left Grambling, I graduated. I started working at Alcorn. I've been here ever since. And I can't remember a, a time frame, a, a, a season or a sports cycle in which the SWAC is getting so much news and notes and energy and constant talk from beginning to end. We start this thing in with football media day last year, all the way through football, basketball, baseball, softball. It, it's it's nothing uh, short of remarkable to me how this thing has just transformed and with and now with name, image, and likeness, and now with the transfer rules, players are on the move. I mean, Noah Bowden's going to Southern University. I didn't expect that. Even though you kind of felt like he wasn't going to be the guy at Grambling, you didn't think he would end up at Southern. But nonetheless, uh, this is this is why these things happen, and this is why we talk about talk about these things. So I'm 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 just you know for me covering all corn and doing all corn. I'll, of course, I have to keep up with what's going on in this conference, and just the movement, the talk, the conversation, the drama. It is it is it's terrific. It keeps us busy. It keeps us up late at night, early in the morning, like yourself, and it's just great. It, I think this is the best that it's been. In the 35 years I've been a part of this league, from 86 as a student to now, it's it, it's off the charts. And I think it's going to get even better. It's going to get busier. And it's going to get even more intense because coaches are now under more pressure to win, more money's being thrown out there, the name, image, and likeness, the deals. Coaches want to win right now. There is no build a program in two years and let's see what happens year three. No, sir. That that mindset's gone. You know, you got to walk in the door. And, and win. And, you know, Coach Coach Sanders, when he got there, do you believe? Very few believe. And now what? In 16, 17, 18 months, he's won a uh, division title. He's won an Eastern Division title, SWAC championship, Travis Hunter. I mean, great recruiting class. And now everyone has to keep up now. Everyone has to try to get to that threshold. So it's just been it's been great. Just That's just football. I mean, in basketball, you got Bethune, Cookman, Florida A&M competitive in basketball, baseball, softball. Well, all, all the moves, transfers. I mean, even in SWAC basketball, you had a, you had a guy in um, Travis Etienne at Texas Southern, one of the better guards in this league, transferred to Southern University. That was the biggest. <laughs> all, I mean, it's, we can go on and on. We can go all day, all night. We can go all day with this thing. So it's it's great. It's great for people like me and you. It's great for people who follow this league. It may not be great for fans because when a player leaves your school, you're not happy about it. But for the rest of us, it's definitely a great conversation. Uh, literally this morning, I was scrambling eggs with my right hand for my kids, and I was on the phone calling my people into Central Time Zone. They're probably mad because I, uh, I got an extra hour on them. So, uh, yeah, man, it, it is it is a lot, which, which again, people in the media, uh, it, it helps us uh, have something to talk about for sure. Uh, I, I checked out one of your conversations with Coach Fred McNair uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and you posed an interesting question, and, and it's on the mind of a lot of fans. This is the first year in quite a while where we don't know 
who's going to march out there and start under center for the Braves. It's been such a great lineage of quarterbacks the last, you know, five to seven years since I, I've been watching it closely after after moving down uh, here in SWAT country. Uh, exciting, maybe a little mysterious, maybe a little unnerving. Uh, what's the pulse of fans heading into the fall? Um, I do think it's the excitement is kind of tapered a little bit. Um, I think the anxiety, I think anxiety is the correct word. And I think it's anxiety because of what we're seeing right now in this league. You got Jackson State that's come on board here and they had won a championship in 13 years and here they are and they're not going anywhere. So now fans are like, look at what Jackson is doing. But then you're also, if you're a fan of whatever school that you're associated with in this conference, you're like, well, I see what Jackson's doing. And then you're asking, what are we doing? What are we not doing? And so I think it's it's a mixture of more anxiety, more frustration, probably more so than anything, because you see what Jackson's doing with the facility upgrades. But as far as Alcorn is concerned, yeah, I mean, you got John Gibbs, who was a four-year starter in this league. Uh, then you've got Lenore's Footman, who won a championship. And you got Noah Johnson. And then Felix Harper, you kind of knew who the quarterbacks were going to be. And for the first time in, what, six years, you don't know. And it is it is a little bit um, of, of anxiety. And I think for Fred McNair, you know him. You, you, you watch him. He doesn't get rattled too much. But I guarantee you, on the inside, he's a little bit concerned because right now you've got three or four guys that are vying for the position. In the spring, um, the decision was not made in terms of who the starting quarterback's going to be. You're going to let it play out in the, in the summer and in the fall. You don't know what's going to happen with the transfer portal. I mean, coaches are adding quarterbacks right now. I mean, Coach Dooley didn't announce it. He, he even said that he might look in the portal. You see Noah Bowden going to Southern University. So there's just some anxious moments in terms of where all corny is for the first time in terms of that quarterback position. Um, I, I kind of figured he wasn't going to, announce it or say anything about it because it is unknown you don't have a lot going on in the spring to where you could really put it to the test so you 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 kind of expected that he was going to wait to till the fall and now that it's kind of happening that way i think for him and i think for fans i think it's just a wait and see i mean we're just so used to you know you're a fan you're just so used you're spoiled Braves fans are spoiled six straight you know easter division titles when we were in the east and now all of a sudden you go from that to the West and now here we are. So I think there's anxious moments for everybody involved. Um, I do think, you know, that Fred McNair should be given an opportunity to figure it out. Elliot Red, an offensive coordinator, uh, figure it out. And whoever the best man wins when we open it up against, uh, against uh, Stephen F. Austin, I think we need to be ready to go because the schedule is very unforgiving. You know, McNeese, Stephen F. Austin, Tulane, there is no break there. We got to get it going right off the bat. So I think that adds the anxiety too. There are no cupcakes to start to where you got to figure you can figure it out. You got to hit the ground, not running, but sprinting. And if you don't do that, you're going to be behind. So I, I think for Braves fans, anxiety. Uh, I think for Coach McNair, it is different. But I do think as the summer and as the fall rolls along, we'll uh, and he'll figure it out. Talking with Charles Edmond, he's the voice of the Braves at Alcorn State. Uh, I know coaches are, are not going to make any excuses, and, and I'm not asking you this from an excuse perspective, but do you think Alcorn is still catching up a little bit from totally missing that spring and just missing that whole year of football uh, when, you know, other SWAC schools did at least, you know, get a chance to, to play that spring? Or, or do you think everything is, all things considered, back on equal footing for everybody? Um, I, I do think as far as the spring is concerned, I think I think it's it would be naive for us to sit here and think that if you didn't play in the spring and other teams did and you just coming in in the fall without having a spring season. Now, you had you had spring camp, you had spring practice. Um, I, I do think that there's going to be maybe a little bit of, of a let a letdown, just a little. I think it's just human nature. Um, but. I think if you take a look at the first game against North Carolina Central, the way we started the season, we had a bunch of injuries. And, you know, we didn't talk about it that much. Coach McNair talked about it some, but not that much. Our assistant coaches talked about it some, but not that much. We were completely, you know, we were 
banged up. We were decimated defensively towards the tail end of the year. The Bethune Cookman loss, Jackson State, we barely had enough players out there. Is it an excuse? Yes, it is an excuse. But I just think that, you know, we it just caught up with us for the first time in in years. You know, all that just kind of piled up on us. And I think that, you know, when you're used to being on top of that mountain, when you're not there, when you're midway on the mountain, you're not comfortable with that. And I think for our fans, we're just so used to to winning this thing, winning the division, going to the championship game, going to Atlanta. And when it didn't happen, it was a shock to the system for everyone. So McNair's not going to make an excuse. No one's making any excuses. It's the ebbs and flows of sports. It's the ebbs and flows of collegiate football. And I do think that Coach McNair will get us back to where we need to be. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not. We're in a new division. Jackson State's on the other side doing some things. But I think I do think in the West, it's very much up for grabs. You got Hugh Jackson, Southern's got Dooley, Prairie View's got a new coach, UAPB, you don't know what to expect there. So I do think being in the West, the uncertainty of it is is, is a little bit more relaxing. The fact that you don't know who Hugh Jackson's going to roll out there in, in week one. You don't know who Dooley's going to roll out there in week one. And so I, I, I think that brings a little bit of comfort, but that means we got to hit the ground running and get ahead of this because teams will eventually catch up and just how far out of front will we be. Taking a look back and a look forward at the same time, Felix Harper signs a contract with the Cleveland Browns. He's currently on the 90-man roster, and we're hoping he makes that 53-man roster. Uh, but just being able to be in that camp, you know, he's going to be with them the rest of the summer, at least until they, you know, start to make decisions, and then we'll see how it shakes out. But how impactful is that for your program to have a quarterback? Now, look, making it in the NFL is hard. Now, we know we can get some – some linebackers and some safeties. We don't get quarterbacks a lot. <laughs> that doesn't happen a lot. Uh, so for Felix to have that big moment, uh, what's the impact there for, for Alcor? Oh, man, it, it's huge. I mean, our, our head coach is a quarterback. He's played at, at that level. Look, Felix is just a good kid. I mean, very humble. I mean, you, you, you know what he did when he was here coming in against McNeese and almost winning that game and just the years that he's had, the excitement that he's had. Uh, for him to to get that deal that he got with the Cleveland Browns, it's an organization on the rise. You know, you you got Deshaun Watson. We all know Deshaun Watson's going to be the guy. You pay him two hundred fifty million dollars. I mean, of course he's going to be the guy. But being in that organization, learning from from the, the folks in that organization, the GM, from Deshaun in terms of the football acumen, I think is a perfect situation. There's pressure in the NFL now. I mean, there there's no doubt when you pay a guy two fifty. Uh, 250 mil, quarter of a billion dollars, you know, you expect to compete in that division. But I think right now, I think it's a great time for Felix to grow and develop and blossom. And if he can stick and stay through camp, I mean, you know, we don't know the number two is in set in stone right now. I mean, so Felix is working his tail off from the reports that I've read. And I think he will be there. He's just a good kid. I mean, just, just being around him, just as humble, just as shy as can be. But he can sling that thing now. And I think that if he can do that in the NFL, uh, I think he'll have a chance to make that roster. And I think he'll make everyone. He's already made everyone at all corn proud, make the swag proud. I'm just I'm just so happy for for Felix Harper and, and just because I don't think anyone saw that coming. Um, but, you know, hey, Felix believed he never doubted. He never doubted that he could get there. And now he's there. And now we'll, we'll see the opportunity that he has to make the most of it. You know, I, I feel like people kind of slept on Felix last year. You know, he, he came off a season, you know, where the last time we saw him, he was the SWAC Offensive Player of the Year. And then so many things changed in the year that, that Alcorn didn't play. And then we had new players and Glass was emerging. And, you know, you had Shadura there. And then a slow start to the season. I, I feel like people kind of – he, he didn't get worse, obviously, but people kind of pushed him attention-wise to, to the back burner, and maybe even I was guilty of the same thing. Yeah, I, I think so. I think, you know, she, what, what Shadur Sanders did in year one surprised everyone but me. Um, you know, I was not surprised that, that he was going to play well. Did I think he would lead him to a division title and a trip to the celebration? Boy, I didn't see that coming, but he, he played well. Of course, Glass had a down year. And, but I think, you know, it's all about team. I mean, Felix Harper had a solid year, but the Braves didn't have a great year. So that kind of gets lost in the wash. You know, when, when the Braves were winning, Felix Harper was doing well. Everything was good. But we weren't winning. We were losing some tough games. Southern, Bethel, Cookman, 
And so that gets lost in the wash. But Felix Harper played well, hung in there. And for him to have the opportunity that he has right now, I think it just shows you just how you can stick to it, you know, despite uh, despite what happened this last year. I mean, for Glass, you know, I mean, we all see what Glass has done at Alabama A&M, slinging that thing around. And for him not to, you know, to be where he is, he has an opportunity in Tampa Bay behind the GOAT. But, you know, I think a lot of people expected something else, and I did too. Um, it, but, you know, hey, you have opportunity. Let, let's see what happens. And I think for, for our fans and for everyone else, I think it was a surprise that Felix Harper did get to where he is right now in Cleveland. Uh, just because the year wasn't great and the Braves didn't have a great year. But it just shows you that scouts look at something else totally than what we look at. And I think they look at the person and they look at the potential. And I think they see that in Felix Harper. And that's why he's on Cleveland's roster. And then his contract details were released. Hey, Felix is going to be just fine. And, you know, he's a humble kid. He's not going to throw his money. You know, he's not going to be flashing a whole bunch of bling, bling, bling. He's not going to do all that. He's just going to stay humble and, and trust the process. And, you know, we're all pulling for him. Do you think it helps him at all that, you know, maybe you can draw some similarities with his athleticism and things that he can do that are, somewhat similar to Deshaun Watson. Do you think, you know, coaches kind of look at that and say, hey, well, in practice, he can emulate some things for us or or however NFL coaches think. Well, you, you have to be mobile. You know, you, you just can't be a statue back there. You know, today's NFL is all about the Patrick Mahomes of the world and, you know, being able to make plays, extend plays, and Felix Harper, you know, he's able to do that um, at all points. So I think the athleticism definitely sold uh, sold Cleveland on him. And Deshaun, you know how athletic he, he was in Houston. So, I mean, he's not as tall as Deshaun Watson. And I'm sure they're working on his arm strength and his mobility even more so. But he had the basic tools to draw the attention. So I think, yes, to answer your question, absolutely. You know, his athleticism definitely was was the key. And, and he's going to get better. I mean, he's young. He's going to get stronger. He's going to get better and faster. And I think Cleveland's a perfect, a perfect situation for him. Talking with Charles Edmond, the voice of the Braves. You're on the road, live from your hotel room right now. You got a baseball series kicking up this weekend. Uh, Alcorn won't make the, the swag tournament uh, this year, uh, but still some things to fight for. But you, you were telling me earlier, it, it's been a tougher year for, for a first-year coach than, than maybe a lot of people realize, like some of the things that, that you don't see on a day-to-day -day basis that, that you're very well aware of. Well, Reginald Williams is our head coach. Um, he he's he has a lot of MLB acumen working in the Reds organization, uh, former MLB player and coach. Um, he arrived on the scene in August. Now, if you look at baseball, co collegiate baseball, even though collegiate baseball doesn't start till February, it's critical that you get things done in the fall, what we call fall ball. So you're recruiting in the summer and the fall. You have fall baseball. You can now play actually regular season games in the fall. Uh, you can now do that under NCAA rules. It's been a couple of years since that's happened. So if you don't, if you're behind in the fall in baseball, you're probably going to be behind in the spring. So him coming in, he had 15 players when he walked in the door. 15. He didn't have a catcher, not one true catcher, um, and he had very few actual pitchers. You have players that can pitch, but were pitchers by trade. A couple of our key pitchers from last year transferred to Texas Southern. And so his roster was depleted. And so when you're looking at these scores early on, 32 to nothing and 28 to nothing, fans were just like, what in the heck's going on? And he explained it very professionally and very eloquently, uh, eloquently what was going on there. In terms of, hey, we don't have a lot to work with, but I'm not making any excuses. We're going to play our tails off. We're going to play the game the right way. We're not going to do all this yapping back and forth. We're going to let our play speak for us. And granted, this last series last weekend against UAPB, um, they played better, more competitive. And I think this weekend against Southern University, I mean, looking at the standings here, I mean, Southern University is tied with Prairie View for first place. Then you got Texas Southern and Grambling. Um, a game back, you got a, you got four teams within a game of each other. We can be spoilers. We can spoil it for Southern University uh, for sure in terms of winning the West. And I think this team, if they continue to play well, they will. 
And it's just a matter of just being a little patient. Um, you know, fans are patient. And I think we'll be fine, though. I think Reginald Williams is the right man for the job. Just relax, take a deep breath. And I think going forward, we will be much better. As a matter of fact, I talked with Coach Williams yesterday. He said he's had over 100 inquiries from players, high schoolers, JUCOs, and others, interest in the baseball program. And I've been posting on my Twitter page, you know, players that will be signing. And uh, so, you know, fans can follow that. So the interest is there. We will be much better next year. Um, we just got to get through this this first year, which was difficult for us. And I think Coach Williams and the players have handled it with class, with grace. Yes, they're competitors. They, they hate losing. They don't want to lose 32 to nothing. But yet they'll be they'll be back next year. They'll be much better for it. It's just just a tough learning experience, despite, you know, the lack of a deep roster in this first year. Charles, do you, do you have any idea of where you would start with the prediction for SWAC baseball tournament champions this year? I mean, I mean, last year you could say, hey, Jackson State against the field. They were they were on fire. But this year, as soon as I think, okay, this team is, is playing well, <laughs> they fall apart. Somebody else rises up. I, I, <laughs> wouldn't, put, I wouldn't put a nickel on the tournament because I, I know I would lose. Yeah. Um, you know, me personally, I'm always, it doesn't matter what sport, I'm always a, a, a believer in the defending champs until they're not. So the defending champs are Southern University. I'm putting my money right now. If I had a bet, I'm not. I'm not a better. But if I were, I would put my money on Southern because they're kind of in the same spot as they were last year. Nobody's really talking about them. You, you look at them in the standings. They're tied for first. But they're the defending champs. And until they get knocked off, you you have to go with them. They're 18 and 9. They're playing really well. They've won three in a row. But, you know, I, I did the softball tournament last week. And – Everyone talked about the top two seeds, Texas Southern, Lady Tigers. They won 12 straight Western Division titles. You look at Bethune Cookman, first year, um, first year in the SWAC. They won. They had one of the best pitching staffs in the conference. And yet, you know, a couple of bad pitches and they're out. Um, and then you have a team like Prairie View that started 0-19. Um, five of their key players quit a month before the season. 15 newcomers, and yet they win the whole thing. It's so uncertain in softball and baseball, and I think it's going to be the same way. But if I had to put my money on on a team, I would put it on Southern because they're the defending regular season champs. You can't go wrong there. But, you know, Grambling's had their their moment. Um, you know, Paige is probably going to be pitcher of the year. He pitched a perfect game against Alcorn, unfortunately, early in the year. Um, you know, Mike Robb, one of the top teams in stolen bases in the country. You can't underestimate speed. And softball last week, that was key speed. You know, with the baseball tournament, it's going to be so uncertain. You just don't know. And, you know, everyone thought last year Jackson State 24-0. and 0, and my, my good podcasters and talk show friends saying, give Jackson State the title right now. I said, wait a minute. Hold up. Yes, they're terrific. But they haven't been challenged. Um, and lo and behold, the last game and a half, they played their worst baseball in the last game and a half, game and a half of the tournament, and they lost to Southern University in the last couple of innings. That's kind of what I'm looking at again in terms of just the uncertainty. So I'm a bet Southern University, but don't hold me to that. I mean, Bama State, you know, they've got the arms. They don't score a lot of runs. They don't have to because their pitching is so strong. But FAMU, but Bill Cookman, first year in the conference, you know, teams on the western side don't get a chance to see that. And I think that's going to throw you off, especially that first game. Now, once you get deeper into it, teams kind of figure you out. But I think this this tournament, just like every tournament, it's going to be so uncertain. Jackson State, they're on the other side of the coin this year. Everyone was looking up to them last year, 24-0 and 0 and all of that. Jackson State is a four seed, and they will be a four seed. So they're going to take on the Western Division winner, whether that's Prairie View, Southern Texas, Southern, or Gramlin. That's going to be interesting to see how Jackson State handles it from the other side of the track. That, you know, the, they didn't get it done last year. Nobody's talking about them that much. And that's probably what Omar Johnson would like. Like, overlook us if you want. We're going to surprise you. So I, that's why I love the softball and baseball tournaments. It's so uncertain. You never know what's going to happen. 
And uh, I think it's great excitement for the fans. And I think it's going to be a great turnout, too, in Birmingham at Regents Park, especially with FAMU and Bethune-Cookman uh, coming on board. Yeah, uh, that whole Eastern Division, man, just – if you can figure it out, God bless you. They, <laughs> sweep one week, get swept the next week, <laughs> sweep one week. Nobody wants to hold on to first place. Uh, but it, it's yeah. entertaining, when, especially when you don't have a dog in the fight uh, and it doesn't cause you any heartache or heartburn. Uh, <laughs> it, it's pretty fun, pretty fun to watch. Uh, Charles, how, how excited are you? How, how, what's the countdown? How, roughly how, how much time do we have left before fall camp starts and they're back out in pads practicing, getting ready for the 2022 season? Well, um, I think it's going to be the second the first week in August, if I'm not mistaken, um, the players will be in. Some will be in the first summer session, which starts in a couple of weeks. And the rest, the majority of the team will be in uh, for the second summer session, which will start right around right after the 4th of July. So come July, everybody will be on campus doing their offseason conditioning until August. Um, it's going to be the first. I don't have the exact date, uh, but it will be the first week in August. We'll be back out there. And uh, I, I, you know, talking with Fred McNair and watching him in spring camp, he was about as focused and as intense as I've seen him. And of course, I've known Fred McNair before he was even at all corners quarterbacks coach. I mean, I mean, he was focused and he was determined. Last year left a bad taste in his mouth. It really did. And I think he is focused and determined to get us back to where we need to be. And I think that, you know, from day one in spring camp through, you know, once the players come back in June and most of them in July, I think it's just going to be one focus in getting it, getting this thing right. Now, who our quarterback be? I don't know. And the other thing, too, probably on the other side, we got a new defensive coordinator. He's not new to Alcorn. Cedric Thomas is back. Cedric Thomas was our defensive coordinator. Then he left to be UAPB's head coach. Um, when Cedric Thornton left to go to Grambling, Cedric Thomas was brought back. So it's this second tour of duty. He has a whole new defensive coaching staff. Very physical, aggressive. Our back end's going to be good. Uh, so there's, you know, there's some anxious moments there in terms of implementing that system on the fly because he was he came in kind of late in the in the in the spring process because uh, Cedric Thornton left rather quickly to go to uh, Grambling. So there's some there's some things there to talk about as well in terms of how to put all this together. But I think for Braves fans, I think we just have to allow Fred McNair to work this thing through. I mean, for the first time in years, you don't know the quarterback's going to be, you know, our running game's going to be solid. Uh, we got to build it up front, defensive, offensive line. That's going to be critical for us, especially with a new quarterback under, uh, under center. But I do think that once we kick it off at home against, you know, against Stephen F., I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be just fine. It's going to be tough, though. There's no question about it. Charles, I was going to ask you, you, you kind of alluded to it a little bit. Uh, I was going to say, are, are you anticipating or expecting another strong uh, run game effort that we've become so accustomed to uh, coming out of the Braves backfield? Yeah, you got Nico Duffy leading the way. And uh, Nico has been, you know, I think Nico is going to be the Nico of old. Um, I, I do think that we had some issues in running the football last year. Uh, I do think we're going to be a lot more committed to it. Not saying that we weren't, but when when they kind of shut it down on us a little bit, the running game, we had to kind of spray it all over the yard. You had, you had to do that. But I think this year we've got a, a lot of backs of the Nico. We're going to run the football more. Um, and I do think especially – and we're going to have to because when you don't have a Felix Harper back there, you can account for him as another running back. When you have that uncertainty at the quarterback position, um, I do think – that um, it's going to be, it's going to be tough, but I do think if you can run the football, I think that that can ease a quarterback's mindset. And I think if we can get that done, I think we'll be fine there. Um, so I, I do think our running game, and when you talk about all corn football, Tolly, it's about running the football. You know, when, when you have the, uh, the Nico Duffy's of the world um, and the Deshaun Wallers of the world, Guys that in the years past have been some of the top running backs in this conference. The Belanche Turners, who played briefly for the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, we have a stable of running backs. 
And so it's just a matter of, you know, with a new quarterback implementing that. And if we can run the football, I think we'll slow down a lot of defenses. Because we're going to have to against the two lanes of the world and the McNeese's of the world. We're going to have to do that if we're going to have some success. Well, we are looking forward to it. As always, we'll be looking forward to you on the call. Charles Edmond, the voice of the Braves at Alcorn. How can people follow you uh, on social media? Charles, they keep up with you online. Um, I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio, and I'm on Facebook, Charles Edmond. And uh, we're kind of looking forward to, you know, getting ready for the upcoming season. Um, just kind of a, 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 an update. Uh, coming up on Monday, we're going to talk with our, our new athletic director, Renoy Dido. Um, he's going to talk about our season ticket package that's been rolled out here lately, and, uh, and Fred McNair on Monday. Um, so we'll get a chance to, to get even a further update of what's going on with Braves football and just let fans just hear from them. Uh, Renoy Dido has been our athletic director starting April, started April the 1st, so he's been on the post about seven weeks. So he's, he's hit the ground running. Uh, he was the associate commissioner of the MEAC. And so uh, he's, he's an Alkanite, played football, remember him as a player. So I'm looking forward to talking with him and, and just getting his vision on what he expects from Alcorn Athletics and Alcorn football and the SWAC in general. I mean, so that's, that's just more news to, to add to our plate. And uh, it makes it even more, just when you thought that you could exhale, you can't, no. <laughs> you, you got to get back to work come Monday and then the, and then the baseball tournament. So, but it's a lot of fun. I would have it no other way. You know, during this time of year, we're trying to figure out after the baseball tournament, what else is there to do? Trust me. You know, there's plenty to talk about. And before you know it, Tolly, you'll be in what? You'll be in Birmingham, Swag Football Media Day, right? <laughs> when is that? Two months away? Yeah, that's uh, in July, uh, about mid-July. Yeah. So, uh, and look, and the things that are so hot right now will be old. There'll, there'll be <laughs> 20 new storylines by the time we get there uh, in July. And, and, and I'm all for it. So, uh, yeah. Charles, we'll catch up with you down the road. You guys make sure you check out Charles online. Uh, look, if you want access to Coach McNair, there, there's the plug right there. Uh, Charles is connected. He'll keep you up to date, and uh, he'll keep you rolling with everything with the Alcorn State Braves. I uh, appreciate a little time from the hotel today. Enjoy the ballpark, and we'll talk to you later, Charles. Thank you. Appreciate it.